Hello, good morning. This is Carrie Freeman, although I have to admit to you, it's not morning. I've just gotten used to saying good morning. It's actually good afternoon. Uh, this is my left ear. It is Wednesday, February 10th. I'm Carrie Freeman. I am the writer, producer, director of My Left Ear. And I do, um, I focus on liberal politics and sometimes other kinds of cultural things. Uh, and I am a hypnotherapist. I do psychic coaching. I make predictions. I do psychic commentary here. And uh, today I'm gonna catch up a little bit about the impeachment. Just gonna weigh in, even though we're a little bit in limbo. Uh, and it is called My Left Ear, as uh, my subscribers know, that I get information through My Left Ear. So thank you, thank you for being here. Thank you for your subscriptions. Oh, and I just zoomed really big, so I, I can't tell you how big my notes are right now. So anyway, I wanna call this, um, this week uh, impeachment the movie, because that's a little bit like what's going on. It's like a movie. It's a preview, it's a trailer, because it is not likely there will be a conviction. Um, doesn't appear that there will be enough GOP senators to do the right thing. They're not gonna do the right thing. Maybe a few, maybe a few will come over. So, like I've said before, and excuse me, I just gotta go into my view and fix this. Um, it went up like to a 300 and I can hardly even re read what I'm uh, looking at here. Okay, thank you for your patience. Um, it did it again. What is going on? Well, Mercury is retrograde, right? I apologize for this. Um, I wanna repeat, we don't give our power over to what we're seeing and what we're hearing. Now, the Democratic uh, managers are doing an extraordinary job. I mean, there's such a level of intelligence and training and uh, artistry uh, in their in the trial in what they're presenting and um, artistry, and it's it is hard to watch someone like Rand appalling doodle and not pay attention and not wear a mask and be hostile, and it's not easy to watch Josh Hawley sit in the balcony with his feet up, writing, not paying attention. And I thought, can you imagine coming to a board meeting in your company and like, you don't pay attention, you put your feet up? I don't think so. Uh, but these are very entitled people. They're very angry. They don't like the Democrats and they're just acting out all over the place rather than being grown ups, taking the high road, thinking about their oath, thinking about the constitution, no. No, 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 it's shameful. And they are putting party over country. Um, and then in a way that means party means nothing if they're putting party over country in a, in a way, because it really is country first uh, under any circumstances. But the Department of Justice and various factions all around the United States, including uh, Georgia, are gonna take Trump to task. Um, they're looking at uh, voter conspiracy tampering in Georgia, and that's become uh, official. The AG there is going to look into this. Um, they know now, like more information has come out, uh, just like we all predicted, that there was a lot of planning with this thing, which I said the first day, oh my God, this thing has been in production for a while. It was so obvious to me. Um, and of course, he knew the he knew the Capitol would be breached, so on and so forth. And he assigned people to the Pentagon who would not respond to the um, emergency at the Capitol, all pre-planned. Um, you know, I've watching the uh, political shows like many of you do, and rehearing repeated over and over go over about. Um, they're afraid of Trump. It's about Trump. And I, my left ear has been saying all along, it's really not so much about Trump. It's about the base. And uh, like, you know, that song, it's all about the base. Uh, 
And so I got, you know, I got, I got that uh, wonderful thing where I turned on the TV and I was watching Al Franken and he said, uh, they should convict Trump, but the pubs won't do that because they're afraid of their base. So I'm in good company with Al Franken. And I want to make a recommendation. Glenn Kirshner just put out a short video, YouTube video from his channel about the impeachment. And he, he really kind of litigates it and he's great. And it's a very interesting video that you could watch. Uh, the same show that I saw Al Franken on, I saw Michael Steele, who used to be head of the Republican uh, National Convention, no longer. And he said he didn't think uh, that there would be a, a conviction this week um, in the Senate, but he said the accounting will come later, hopefully with the voters. And yes, my left ear thinks that. It's gonna show up in two years with the voters because between also between now and two years, people uh, who, who think they're madly in love with Donald Trump and he's the savior are gonna um, start experiencing some normality and improvements and an uptick in the, uh, in the workforce, in finances, and that's going to reflect in the 22 vote. And the people that are acting poorly in the Republican Party are just giving incredible ammunition when they go to run again. So much can be pointed up. No, this guy that you're thinking about voting for, he didn't want you to have any stimulus. He didn't want you to have an increase in your unemployment. No, he didn't want to. He didn't care that those five people died. So it's going to be interesting. My left ear uh, thinks that the planning part, that that Trump was so involved with planning uh, when he lost the election and this planning went on for months. Now they're finding out this enormous amount of money went into this also. But like I said, this impeachment this week, it's extremely important uh, because it's all going down in history. It's all being televised, it's right there and uh, no one can escape it. Nobody can escape it. Nobody can say, oh, that's fantasy because it's all the facts. So that is good. And I, would, I just wanna say for anybody who's upset, I understand it, I'm upset also, but I know it's just a piece of this whole thing. And I think a necessary piece. I think something good comes out of it. I've been thinking a lot about the runes that I tossed twice about this impeachment thing that both had something positive in the final rune. And I, it just has me believing uh, that something good comes out of this. It lays a foundation for future trials. Something good comes out of this. Um, you know, two, oh yeah, I wanna say something about a couple of things here. I have a question. Who disengaged the panic button? That hasn't been answered yet. But I am hoping, and it's I, it's got to be an inside person. But we know that the FBI, um, the DOJ is uh, investigating members of the House, members of the Senate uh, that may have been involved in this. And that's going to go a little slower. But my left ear thinks it's definitely someone we know of, and it's someone who's inside because some human being disengaged the panic button. And that's tremendous forethought. Uh, the people that have been arrested, and some are still in jail, some are getting, one guy's getting organic food, which is unbelievable, laughable. Um, and one woman made a plea to go on a, uh, a group bonding uh, trip with her coworkers, and the judge, let her go. I know. What my left ear wants to say is <clears throat> be prepared for uneven justice among the seditionists um, that stormed and breached the Capitol. I think we're going to see this. Unfortunately, I really hate to say this, but I think we're going to see the racism in the uh, trials and in the sentences and some a little bit of privilege and it's going to depend on who the attorneys are it's not going to be equal justice and i feel really bad about saying that but it's part of the prediction so i have to 
I have to mention it. Very, very disappointing. It's a disparity in judges, etc., cetera, et cetera. Um, You know, over two years ago, I was tweeting over and over again, Trump is a domestic terrorist. It never got much uh, response, but now they're calling him a domestic terrorist. And I just, that's how I felt about it. And now it's, uh, people are catching up to me. Lindsey Graham, who's kind of going down the drain, uh, he's becoming someone that people don't listen to. They think he's a joke. Um, he looks bad, like he's deteriorating. More than that, I will not say. And by the way, I forgot to say, this is for entertainment purposes. It's very important to say that. Uh, Lindsay said, yeah, the Dems have waged war on the presidency. I heard him say it. I wrote it down. And I wrote back and said, no, 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 no. Trump waged war on the presidency. That's more like it. But it just shows you that his uh, rubles and his compromat continue on. And one of these days we're going to find out. I can tell you on Twitter, everybody talks about what is he hiding? One thing that's really good is that President Biden is systematically undoing everything that Trump did. Uh, doesn't look like Trump's going to get intel. He shouldn't. Uh, and Joe's immediacy and empathy about the COVID relief package, and he makes no apologies for it because he thinks you and I are that important. So it's coming, and this creates goodwill. Um, there is a there is something um, that MLE noticed in the press right now, and it's sort of a mixed bag. I think the the press is in a period of adjustment because they've been with this drama, and every single day some giant news story that Trump was fueled by or his tweets, and they don't have that now because uh, Joe Biden's administration is getting to work. And he's got a press secretary that's no drama. She just answers the questions. She tells the truth. She doesn't get upset. She's incredibly professional and smart. So they're in a little bit of a dilemma. And I noticed they're, they're taking shots. Like it's been this many weeks and Joe hasn't done this, or this is where the polls, this is what the polls are saying. It's like, it's a little too early. Can we just give the guy a month to start doing things, which he has? crazy. And one of the things that Joe's going to be doing, of course, he's setting up a situation where he can get rid of uh, Louis DeJoy. And I call him Louis DeJoyless, uh, the guy who messed up the post office and the UPS and all this kind of stuff. So Joe Biden can't technically fire him, but he can uh, replace people in um, se senior positions like on a, a council or I, I'm not thinking of the right word right now. I'm sorry. Uh, and then those people can vote him out. So Louis DeJoyless is on his way out. And yes, he did a lot of damage with uh, post office. I think we're still feeling it. Deliveries are still slow. Uh, and I'm just going to go back and say this. The people that you're dying to be nabbed by the FBI and the AGs, they're just being meticulous. And they are investigating from every angle. And it isn't one just one system that's investigating. And there's I, I wrote a list of people that they're looking into that are looking at some bad stuff. But you know what? This li The list is even longer than what I wrote. So I don't think I'm going to go through everybody's name. I think you can probably guess who these people are. But uh, Lauren Bo Bohert, Bobert um, and Marjorie Trailer. Taylor Green are on that list. They're not going to be around, probably not for six months. I'm going to say six months, okay? And there'll be, there'll be others too. There'll be others. Oh, yeah. We just have to be patient. Uh, you know what name I did throw in there? Rod Rosenstein. Because Rod really uh, was merciless about these kids being separated from their uh, parents at the border. And he, he just laid down those, those orders. Now he says he regrets it. Oh, isn't that nice? He regrets it. I don't think so. Uh, the other thing that I think is one of the most exciting things, one of the most exciting things, and it's going to make a difference, is this uh, billion-dollar lawsuit on the war of disinformation and that 
this this company, what is it called? Something Mag Smartmatic uh, has lay has you know uh, lobbied a billion dollar lawsuit against Fox News uh, for disinformation and the reporters. Not every single reporter, but your top seven. Um, and this is the beginning. This is how you shut down the disinformation, the propaganda, because people can't afford, they can't afford to lose money. They can't afford to close down. And uh, back in the day, that's what Morris Dees, a famous Southern attorney did with the KKK. He bankrupted the KKK. So this is, people are starting to figure out, oh, let's just get them in their, in their wallets. And uh, Fox is scared. And then they fired Lou Dobbs. That was just the beginning. They are scared. This is a lot of money. Uh, and then finally, our friend Kavanaugh on the Supreme Court. He's being, there is a deep dive um, article happening with the Lincoln Project and uh, Greg Oliar, great writer, political writer. And they're going uh, like a four part series to get into the mystery of why Kavanaugh all of a sudden got rid of all his debts and bought a beautiful home. And so the idea is that basically they bought him the position, dark money bought him the position on the Supreme Court. And I'm aware um, for a long time, uh, I think Linda G has been saying, he's gone, he's gonna be gone. It's just taking a long time. And I agree with her on most everything. So here we are. There's a check-in because it's been a week. Um, I have two quotes for you. And I'll tell you who said them after I quote. So here's one. Let us not seek the Republican answer or the Democratic answer, but the right answer. Let us not seek to fix the blame for the past. Let us accept our own responsibility for the future. John F. Kennedy. John F. Kennedy. The second quote, whenever men take the law into their own hands, the loser is the law. And when the law loses, freedom languishes. And that was Robert F. Kennedy. So I decided to kind of keep it in the family today. And these quotes seemed appropriate. Let me look at the time. I'll read these one more time and then I gotta go. John F. Kennedy, let us not seek the Republican answer or the Democratic answer, but the right answer. Let us not seek to fix the blame for the past. Let us accept our own responsibility for the future. John F. Kennedy. And here's Robert Kennedy, Robert F. Kennedy. Whenever men take the law into their own hands, the loser is the law. And when the law loses, freedom languishes. These are pretty smart men, pretty cool men. Of course, we know nobody's perfect. Uh, so while we're a little bit in limbo, uh, I'll be back. We're just watching this whole thing. And just remember, it's a trailer to the real movie that's coming with real consequences. So leaving you with that kind of happy thought, I say make peace, make memories, and look for good evidence or provide good evidence, okay? And here we go. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.